Hey, welcome into the football after show, the final regular season game. Thank goodness of what we think will be major change up at Hallis Hall. Bears really had a poor performance in the second half, and they lose to the Minnesota Vikings. 31-17 is your final. That's Alex Brown. Yeah, That's Lance Briggs. That's Ole Cruz. I'm David Kaplan. And rather than lingering on too much of today's game, we'll talk more big picture. But I'll start with you this time, Olin. Mm. Neggy is good and Neggy is that guy coined it two years ago. I could not believe fourth and one throw, throw, throw. It, it, he was going to go down his way. He really was. And he said earlier in the week, right, they asked him, are you calling plays? And he said, well, Blazer will call plays. Then again, I might call plays, but we're just going to have fun when we're out there. <laughs> and what shocks me now, and, and it's funny, but it's frustrating because what shocks you is the standard fork when a coach says that. Can you imagine if a player said that? Mm -hmm. Hey, Lance, are you starting to will today? Well, I might or my backup might, or we may just have fun. So if you're watching this game and you're shocked that this guy did a shuffle pass, mm -hmm. or you're shocked that they threw it in all their fourth and ones and Montgomery sat on the sideline, you're not listening to him during the week. He told you what he was going to do today, and, and I'm not shocked watching that today. Yeah. Uh, today was a <clears throat> microcosm of the whole time he's been here. Mm -hmm. Yep. I really hope, I just hope that, that after this, this experiment here in Chicago for Nagy, He's able to to really go back and, and evaluate himself, self-evaluate himself, you know, because there has to be growth from here. You know, you come into this game right here, you you go for it on fourth down. Each one of those, you throw the ball when you have a perfectly good back in David Montgomery. Uh, I mean, this is these this these are part of the reasons why you've struggled so much. You know, these decisions. So I hope you give good you know self-evaluation on yourself. You know, good self-scout moving forward because when. Everything you put on that field, that's your, that's your resume, whether it be players, whether it be coaches. And if you're too stubborn to run a simple play of handing the ball off to your running back that can get you one yard, and you know he's, he's going to fight for that one yard, um, these are the things that, that your, your next evaluators or your next hire, but your next uh, employee, employers mm -hmm. are going to look at and say, hey, look, you know, is this what we are can to expect from you? Can you explain that to us? Yeah. yeah. Hey, are you, is this what to expect from you? So you got to get stuff cleaned up. A.B.? And that's just another experience. That's another situation right there Lance is showing why he's a really good guy. Because I truly don't give a damn what Nagy does when he leaves here. Just as long as he's my, co he ain't my coach no more. I don't care. Go. I don't care. Get out of here. Go ahead. I'm, because what I saw today, it's been the same thing, just like Olin said. It's been the same thing we've been watching, if you've been watching, for the last four years. Since he got here, it's just in 2018, some of it worked, Right. And we're looking at that back then, and Lance and I are talking about it. Like, why are we in four wide on fourth and inches? And then we get the first, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, great job. That's not going to work. Will it work? Okay. Mm -hmm. Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> you ain't going to trick everybody. This is the NFL, man. He won. He come in. He wins coach of the year. Those defensive coordinators that were going to go against him the following years, they spent the whole offseason trying to figure him out. And he doesn't adjust. He goes in and he says, we got to do what we do better. It's not working, coach. Mm -hmm. It's not working. So we, and we've seen that. Look at the third quarters. Look at coming out of halftime. Look at when he comes out of a, off a, a bye week and you're, like, you're shocked. Like, you had two weeks and that's what you came up with? Mm -hmm. It's the same stuff all the time, and I'm tired of seeing it. Yeah, listen. Oh, well, hold on real go quick. Ahead, uh, so, small side note. I'm, I said it because I, I care about people. And so, you know, I care about people, and, and I want to see everybody be successful. That's all. It's all right. up to him. Well, we all know you're a great It's guy. up to him. <laughs> anyway, literally, this, this is what we're saying about Hallis Hall. Okay, why are you so mad that Afedi started a right tackle in Seattle? Mm -hmm. Because the guy is not taking care of the organization. Where is your leadership, right? Mm -hmm. why, what's the big deal with Peter starting a left tackle over Tevin Jenkins? Because you're not taking care of what's best for the Chicago Bears. And then your head coach comes out and says, we're doing what's best for us right now. So if anybody is shocked after listening to the words he said and watching the guys he's been playing mm -hmm. over the young guys, then you're not watching this guy. Like today, literally, like <clears throat> you have to be pissed off if you're running mm -hmm. the Chicago Bears after you watch today's game. But the problem is no one up there walks down to the head coach's office and says, what the hell are you doing? Mm-hmm. 
why is Jermaine a Fetty team captain and starting a right tackle over Borum? And then you're going to tell me that next week Borum should be the oh, starting sorry. right tackle. Because a week later, he did. He did. Tevin Jenkins, we don't see him today to five minutes in the third quarter. Over a 40-year-old, we all say it. Much respect. Yeah, Jason absolutely. Jason Peters. Everybody says mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I don't, like. It doesn't make what, no sense. It doesn't make any sense. You're watching a game. This guy is doing nothing good for your organization. But that falls on the people now who have to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Because you're in charge of the building. You're the one letting all this stuff go for weeks. Mm -hmm. So now you get the effect of it all in one day. And you literally, the team went out there and embarrassed your logo. So do you care about it? Mm -hmm. But again, okay, we could fire Ryan Pace. Mm -hmm. could fire Matt Nagy. In the end, who's making the decision who the next dude is? Because another Phil Emery might walk in the door. Mm -hmm. Phil Emery, who hires Mark Tressman over Bruce Arians, right? Mm -hmm. So this stuff just keeps going on and on and on. And until, like you said, until you change who's actually making the big decisions, it's still the same people picking what's going to happen with the organization. Yeah. So there was a story this week about you maybe going to do some work for the Bears. And it got a lot of attention. Who's that? About oh, I'm you. sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and Mike, Mike. When I originally saw the story, mm -hmm. first thing I did, I called you. Mm -hmm. I go, is this true? Mm -hmm. And you said, do I make yeah, stuff? Yeah, I, I took that personally. <clears throat> like, that's a right. dumb question from you, but I don't, you know, that's just. <laughs> like, you don't have to ask if I said the story. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Right. Right. And I said, I can't believe mm -hmm. that a general manager of a team worth four and a half billion dollars mm -hmm would treat a future Hall of Fame legendary player and go, yeah, we'd like to have you come in and work with some of the linemen. We'll pay you $15 an hour. Less, less than minimum than wage. than minimum wage. Less than that dude who does commercials for McDonald's is offering in the commercial, you can make 17 bucks an hour and get all these benefits. Right. $15 an hour to a guy who I think belongs and will be someday yeah, but, in the Pro but, Football but Hall of Fame. Belonging in the Hall of Fame, being a player, all that stuff is fine. The question is, what do you bring to the team? But it's team? so disrespectful. Well, they even listen, put it out there. Don't, that yeah. is disrespectful. They even put it out there and say, hey, hey we, we would like you to come out and, and coach up our offensive linemen, and this is our, our offer. Right. Well, yeah. you have no experience, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure their argument is this, you have, we don't know what you can do for us. Well, then you should ask. Correct. Mm -hmm. Then you should yeah. ask, like, you know, have an interview talk to me and say, okay, what do, you, what do you think you can bring to the organization? And that's, all that is fine. It's just that is not a serious offer. When I open up your ChicagoBears.com and I see you have 90 people on staff. Mm -hmm. But aren't you being, you're being recommended by Harry Heastack. You're yes. being recommended by somebody that's okay, been hired. Okay, so let me ask a question. You two guys are in the NFL, not former Bears. Mm -hmm. You are coaches in the NFL with great reputations. Mm -hmm. And the Bears call you. They want to talk to you about coming to work here. Mm -hmm. And you hear a story like that about how disrespectful he was treated, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Would that affect your thoughts about, I'm not going to even interview with those people because they have no idea what they're doing? Because I could see a Jim Harbaugh or pick the guy and go, they offered a guy $15 an hour. I don't hour know. I don't know what you no guys think, but I think a lot of coaches might agree mm -hmm. with the fact that former players don't they don't know what a former player can actually provide, mm -hmm. right? But that's what I'm saying. Then Ask. If, if you should have what can you bring to our organization. Don't, don't do make the know? offer. Ever? But, don't, but don't make the offer. Don't, don't give an offer of $15 or 1550 or whatever the hell it was. You don't give that offer to someone. That, that 50 that, cents almost had me thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't, but you, you just don't give that because you know, they, I'm, it's I'm with you. It's a spin the hey, face. Like, God right, dang. That's like my they, point. They're, they're happy this is, this is the Olin right now. It's funny, because though. Because the old Olin might have walked down to uh, Hallis Hall. It's funny that you say that, and a lot of people react like that. Did it, was it disrespectful? And it's funny, though, when I seen the offer, I wasn't shocked mm -hmm. at all. I had been there for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Right. I know the way they assume that you're just lucky to be in the building around them coaching football. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like, it was funny because when I saw it, it wasn't like, Oh yeah. man, that's disrespectful. Right. Or, like, right. or you're shocked. It was you're more like, like whatever. Yeah, like that's about yeah. what I thought. Okay, so you made a quote that I don't think we've talked about it here. Olin made a quote during the week on 
his radio show on the score when he was on. And he said, stop thinking about who's the quarterback or can we get a receiver. Your problems start much bigger. It's a much bigger picture look. Am I correct in what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you fix culture? I'm asking you two guys, how do you fix Are we the coaches that you're coming in to hire? I want to talk to you, Lance. You've been very successful coaching in wherever. I want it. I need my culture fix. I hear you're thinking about hiring uh, Alex Brown. Is that true? Uh, we are talking to Alex. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, uh, every, <laughs> 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 every, every, every organization is going to be different. Every organization is going to be different, man. And this organization in particular, uh, if I am going to come and coach here, and, and I'm, I'm, if I'm one of those esteemed coaches, mm-hmm. whatever it is, then I'm, I'm, I, w- I would only do it with – certain like particular situations like I I need control I need control because the control that's been had over the last 10 15 years hasn't worked so the only way that I would be able to uh, to 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 come and coach here in Chicago I would need to control personnel I would need to have a lot more control than what Trustman and and Nagy and, Maggie and Lovey and everybody has had <clears throat> there's something that has to be changed how do you fix the culture oh man Honestly, I, I think it just, it can't be just bringing in the right coach. It truly can be. We've seen this organization go to a Super Bowl. We've seen them, I mean, 85, they won it. But what we're looking for is sustained success, right? That's what we're looking for. And I think you have to have the players. I think you got to have the players. And then I don't think it goes higher than the GM. If you get the GM right, then from there, you can get everything else right. Because... But like Lance said, he has to have the power. When you bring in uh, Matt Nagy, or I'm sorry, when you bring in uh, Ryan Pace. You can't tell him he's got to hire John Fox. Correct. You can't do that. Like, you're not giving him power. That's, he's not a GM. If you don't think he can do the job, damn it, don't hire him. That's it. So, but when you, when you try to put people together so y'all can help each other, well, hold on. If I'm going to do my job, I don't need, I don't need help. I, I, I can do my job. You bring somebody else in and allow me to hire the people to do the jobs that need to get done so we can fix this. And then it's what the owners want. What, how do they want their football team? How, how do they want it? And if that story is true, right, if the story of they hired Ryan Pace and told him to hire John Fox, if Ryan Pace is okay with that, he's not the guy. Right? You're not the guy right. if you let someone tell you, if you say, I'm going to take this job, I'm the general manager, now you have to hire this head coach. From the outside looking in, for me, I would say, well, that's not the guy I want. I, if he didn't fight for that decision, mm-hmm. like, listen, I don't care who you recommend. I'm the general manager here. Either fire me or let me make my choice. Right? Mm-hmm. If he didn't stand for himself at that time, mm-hmm. I could have already told you at that moment. Mm-hmm. If that story is true. Mm-hmm. If that story right. is true, I don't know. I don't know if they told him to hire John Fox, but that has been leaked out. Right? And look at the other thing that's been leaked out. What is what, one of the biggest things Ryan Pace has done well? Well, he redid our football side of our building. Like, that's, I don't take credit for the plumbing in my house, right? The house is just built. I didn't do the plumbing. Hey, Olin, you have a beautiful plumbing. Yeah, I did, man. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, I could go around and take pictures of Alabama's football center and the nicest, and just say, look, I want this. <laughs> like, that's why we're keeping him now, because he built a facility. Like, Ryan Pace didn't say that, Judge McCaskey. All I'm saying is, if these stories that keep coming out are true on why they keep Ryan Pace, they make no sense to me. Nope. Mm-hmm. None. Zero. Your, your job is to get the players in the beautiful building, get the right strength coach, get the right nutritionist, mm-hmm. get the right clinician. When you talk about standard, when you talk about culture, you talk about everybody. Mm-hmm. You are the guy who picks them. Okay, so how do you find a coach? We were all talking in the conference room about it doesn't have to be Nick Saban, but that kind of guy who changes mm-hmm culture wherever you go. How do you find a guy who does that? They are rare. rare. They are rare. Right? And how do you find them? You have have to know, like, George George McCaskey, Ted Phillips, and whoever else up there sits in a room. If Nick Saban walks in, I I mean, I imagine they're uncomfortable. I imagine when Nick is in there talking football, they're a little uneasy with that kind of guy in the room. So who do they like in the room with them? Someone that doesn't make them uncomfortable. Ryan Pace, right? So how do you get to that guy? If you don't like being in a room with Lance loves people, he just told you. Mm -hmm. I would argue that 
He's a little tougher to be in a room with than, than, than he just <laughs> portrayed himself as. I would argue that, right? But when I see in a room with, with some people, I'm like, yes, this is the mm -hmm. kind of guy I want running my building. Mm -hmm. He's going to make people, un and obviously there's a limit to it, but he's going to make people uncomfortable because uncomfortable people do a good job. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know how and who. Let's assume that Matt gets fired this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning. It's over. Mm -hmm. Okay? That era is over. Thank goodness that era is over. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If Ryan is indeed out, mm. who in the H then is higher in the next guy? That's the scary part of it all. Well, it's either Ted. Ted Phillips is going to do it. Or George. Or George. Or That's Scott my point. Yourself. Who's and right they're not going to get it right. This is going to do it. And you won't get it right. Well, they're, seeking a lot so, of, they're seeking a lot of help from a lot of different people and trying to, trying to change the culture, you know. But, um, I, I, you know, let's say you, you, you get some advice from Ozzie Newsom. Ozzie Newsom gives you some great advice. That doesn't mean they're going to follow it. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Like, they're gonna, they can get the best advice in the world. And, but a lot of people, we're, we're creatures of habit. They fall back. You're going to fall back on, on what, what you what Somebody you who looks with. good in their foursome. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, you, can't take it, you can't take advice with you in the room mm -hmm. with the guy that you want, right? And then do you know, just because you have advice, you're looking for a, a leader of men. Fine. Mm -hmm. When I put the film on of Justin Fields for two games and I have the guy sitting next to me say, what do you think about this guy? And he starts talking about Justin Fields' footwork and the way he reads defense and sees the blitz and the way he's got to beat the blitz. <laughs> do you know what he's talking about? Mm -hmm. Do you know what he means when he says he's going to help him improve and get better? Okay, now let me talk to you about Cody White here. How do, how do I help him take the next step? Let me talk to you about Eddie Jackson, Jalen Johnson. How do I teach him to touch someone down late in the game? How, mm -hmm. how, how do I get that across to people? Mm -hmm. When he starts explaining all that, okay, now who, who's your strength coach? Who's your nutritionist? Who, right? Advice on finding, like, someone who can change your culture. Like, look how hard it is for, for us to explain it to people so that you understand what we mean by culture, standard, every day, setting the example. For them to get there is not as easy. Well, for a lot, look at all the NFL teams. There's not a lot of, there's not a lot of great coaches out there. Mm -hmm. To get to the answer is not easy. And you'd have to, you'd have to steal that, that coach away from, from their organization. Bingo, because to go get flavor of the day, that OC, that DC, you don't know if that guy can be a head coach. Mm -hmm. Good assistants that mm -hmm. make lousy head coaches, mm -hmm. right? You, you want a you want a great coach. You're gonna have to pass that blank check to give him that walk away. This is walk away money. Like I felt <clears throat> like today, if I was his owner, it's over. You're out, done. But deep down, I think that guy gave a big middle finger mm -hmm. to the rest of the management team today. He went, I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm getting fired anyway. It's fourth and one. I'm gonna throw. He's been doing that since he's been here. On his on his uh, little notepad, be his offense, be you. Listen, be you, be you. You you want to show respect because mm -hmm. we've all been in a building. We know how many hours they spend mm -hmm. trying to get the football team ready. You're trying to show respect. What we watch today, if this wasn't television, there's a lot to say oh, about yeah. what I what we saw today yes. yep. out there on fourth. Down. It was embarrassing. Yeah, there was a, there's a lot to say about the things that were going on in the field. Some of the guys who play, I thought. The way Tevin Jenkins played a left tackle, he should have been there anyway. But if I'm in the building, Alex uh, Lance is in the building, any football guy's in the building, you walk down there and you would say, what the is going on? Mm -hmm. why, aren't, why are those guys playing? Well, what do you, so what, what we saw today, like you said, Cap, and um, you know, we'll, we'll let you handle the rage part because that's what you feel. You feel like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah, he embarrassed himself today, I thought, yeah. with his play calling. I can't disagree with you with his decision making. I thought it was ridiculous. He was a naggy. What we Naggy is gonna naggy. Gonna naggy. But oh, guess yeah. what? Not too much longer because <laughs> there's zero chance there's a better chance that there's a Eric, five percent the cameraman chance. right there. That naggy there's a the five percent chance. <laughs> there's a zero percent. Five percent. Zero. Do you remember the end of your press conference last year? I do. Okay. Just saying there's a five And I, that's why I'm saying until I hear zero. from George mm. or Ted. Until I hear from them. I'm not, I'm not giving everything 100% about it. I'm not. You just don't good know. Point. I don't you know. just don't know. They thought That's they had point, the man. culture and standard we talk about. They said they had it, but they don't have the wins in the quarterback. They have the quarterback. They, yeah. when, you, when you think about some of the stuff you hear out of that building, what Olin said about, they say, hey, we, I think we got everything else right. We just need. Did we get the quarterback entirely right? No. Like, Did we win enough games? No. Everything man. else is there. Different.
There's Matt's record. Yep. 12 and 4, won the NFC North, clinching it over the Packers at Soldier Field. 8 and 8, 8 and 8, 6 and 11. He will leave with a winning record, which is surprising. And the two playoff appearances with Mitchell Trubisky as his quarterback. And, and you got to go to the point. Now. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go to the point of he's on his way out the door because of he didn't develop Mr. Trubisky and his offense mm -hmm. has been really bad. Mm -hmm. Right? I think they're 18.4 points a game. Mm -hmm. They had 17 today. They failed on fourth downs in the red zone. We saw a lot today of why he's on his way out the door. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I, I think we've been watching this for, for four years, since he's been here. He just had success because it was new to everybody his first year. And a historic defense. 38 takeaways, six touchdowns all in 2018 and all of it regressed immediately 2012 i think historic lance, right lance's damn defense lovey's this lovey's yeah. last year yeah. had 44 takeaways we did so that was historic mm -hmm. 2018 was historic huh i'm talking about for him no 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 don't for, for him yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no 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 you uh -huh. said you just said historic you said it's historic you said yeah historic. and you also said that after that year going into 2019 they were better than our 2016. You said that. So, so mad at let me you. Just pull, I was so let mad me just at you. pull the curtain back. He's at my house with, with his beautiful oh. wife, Carrie. Was Ryan there? No. Oh. I invited him, but he didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> we are sitting in my kitchen, right? Yes. We are sitting in my kitchen. It's got to be close to midnight. And he and I are screaming at each other. I said, dude. This team's ready to take the next step. That defense is better than your 06 defense. Carrie's looking at me and looking at my I, wife laughing. He's screaming at me. I'm fine mad, bro. What I'm was the year? Mad. What was the year that you went and talked to the team that you said they were going to be something special this year? You went and talked to the team right in the training camp. Just before the 18 year. Was that the 18? No, it wasn't the 18 year. Yes, it was. It was not. It was not the 18 year. Did you feel like it was a it? speech? No. No, they, they, I, I think he got lucky. Like, he was... He was new. That, that's why this stuff worked. Once people had an offseason to look at what he does, mm. it ain't going to work no more. And so that simple. And he's been the same. And you know what, points again. what Alex is saying, 2018, week 14, they played the Rams. Mm -hmm. It's been since then, really. Yes. That they haven't had a chance. They haven't been able to put the ball in the end zone. And the problem is they talked about the run game a lot. And they talked about the offensive line a lot. Mm -hmm. But they didn't go fix the offensive line in the run game was never really their problem. If you took a close look at the games that they did run the ball well, they barely scored any points, mm -hmm. right? And that, that comes out this year when they average about 120 yards rushing a game and they still can't score. I believe yeah. 11 to me, in the league <clears throat> rushing. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like, he, uh, it's like Nagy, he, he perfected, you know, studying someone's playbook, you know, but he lacks the creativity to create his own. You know, like I, I can master this, this playbook right here, you know, and then mm -hmm. we, get a, we draft the Justin Fields, He's like, all right, well, the best I can do is put you into this playbook that I've mastered. Instead of seeing a Justin Fields and seeing what he's been able to do. Like at, John Harbaugh uh, did with Lamar Jackson. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely, and say, okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna create some plays. We're going to put a new, a new uh, uh, playbook that's tailored to your strengths. Or Jim Harbaugh stay, did with Colin Kaepernick. Stay right there with the Ravens and see what they did as far as their quarterbacks right behind each other. Those guys are all the same guys. Some, I mean, uh, Lamar Jackson is more talented than Huntley Tyler and Johnson. Tyler Huntley is the same but style player. Yeah, but when you look at our, you look at our quarterbacks. You got Justin Fields, and then the next two, they're nothing like Justin Fields. Nothing. Right. So what are we doing? We're teaching two offenses here, and then when he gets into Cleveland, it's almost like you, he just came to the team last week because you had no plan for him, and the kid damn near gets killed out there on the football field. I would have fired him after that game. Yeah, you said that. Mm -hmm. I was I was game. hot after that game. I did not like that. 